Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. Feedback. With my main man, the engineer, Tim, Timmy, Tim Smith. And we're going to see how it goes this morning. Because I mean to tell you, it is so much going on in the world today. My goodness. Should have two guests coming down. We'll see what happens. Um, right now, we just gonna keep it simple, and that's important. Just as Miss Broughton would say, want to say a lot of love to all the hood research members out there, and Sister Sylvia, and Sister Tawana, and the rest of the crew, my peoples, of course, my main man, the barber, Mr. Eric Scott. And the tycoon, Mr. Frank Chico Sorrell, the insurance agent making things happen, Kevin Robinson. So it's a lot of love to everybody out there, all my Howard family, and the like. You all know who you are. I love all of y'all. Brother Darwin out there, a lot of love to you. Let's see. We getting in the heat of things and the thicker things, as they say, with the election. And, whew, as we all know, you all saw on Saturday, somebody uh, attempted to, they say, assassinate former President Donald Trump. An assassination attempt didn't go off. He was clipped in the ear by a bullet. Somebody was... Um, Unfortunately, somebody got killed. It was a fireman in the crowd. Man, it's just, wow, there's a lot of foolishness going on. I was just coming in, listening to CNN, and and they claim President Trump is going to tone down his rhetoric now, and he's going to speak about unity. We're going to try to unite the country because America is starting to look to the rest of the world um, very violent, very angry, very dangerous. And um, this is no way to run a democracy, for sure. And almost like coup attempts or something. So, you know, we're going to have to honestly look at how we're going to pull this off in the future. I mean, what are we going to do? You know, people have been left out so long of the process, what can you do? What are you going to do? We well aware that the people with the money, they run these things. You know, you got 800 billionaires in America. And they have a lot of sway in what goes on in our politics. And it's unfortunate. You know, It really is. The Republicans, their policies just haven't done very much for the working man. And sometimes I wonder, I mean, guys come up to me like, the Democrats, that's the plantation, you know. <laughs> and I get it. Frustration to make you say these things. But we know, as a people, as black Americans, that we have invested a lot in the Democratic Party. And the reason we've invested in the Democratic Party is because they've had policies that have assisted us, mainly the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. These were two policies that opened the door for black Americans to become a part of this American experiment. We've been left out for so long, pushed to the side, even with Social Security. I mean, most of us were farmers. Most of the women, you know, day laborers worked in homes. They couldn't get Social Security. That's the way the system was set up. It's unfortunate. 
they kept us out of this system. And I always look at what has happened since they passed those bills. And if you go back and start looking at the numbers, this is why I say, are you tired of racism, people? You'll see everything pretty much stagnated in 19, start 1970. Your wages started stagnating. Union membership started going down. The tax on the working man heated up to the point where, hey, you became the enemy as a working person. And it hasn't subsided. I mean, for the Republicans, they've been battling the working man ever since. And for black people, that's what we are. We are working people. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, we talk about education. You talk about, you know, colleges and degrees and universities. I think the numbers are something like 23% of us even have a bachelor's degree. That means 77% of us don't. And that's just a bachelor's degree. And then, you know, the women talking about we the most educated. I mean, it sounds nice. But if you look at it, even with the sisters, I think the numbers for the sisters are like, out of that 23%, the sisters are like something like 14%. So the men are like right around 9.3, 9.4. So the difference of about 5% swing with the degree. The numbers aren't great. And the majority of black women who have degrees, 60% of them get degrees from these for-profit universities. So a lot of times they get like a nursing degree, uh, some kind of degree from like a F- University of Phoenix. They got ECD, all these universities that pop up online. It's not like going, you know, to a state university or a private institution, or like I said, a public university. And we know why, because those are expensive. <laughs> okay. You used to get pale grants and the like, and you could pay for college. That doesn't happen anymore. Which is why we have got to put together a platform. What do we want from our government? I mean, honestly, what do you want from government? We know that, what, Biden tried to cut you a little slack on your student loans for higher education because we had like $1.3 trillion in student loan debt. I mean, that's amazing. Um, And it didn't happen. And you know why it didn't happen? Because the Republicans said, you don't deserve $10,000 break on your loan. Because that was what it amounted to. Everybody's going to get around somewhere around up to $10,000 of their loans forgiven. The Republicans said, no way. No way. They filed a lawsuit up in Wisconsin. Got to stay. Then what happened? Supreme Court said, no, we can't do this. You're not fair. But you, as a person of color... African American, <laughs> you want to hey, give them a shot. I said, oh, you know, maybe we should spread our votes around with the Republicans and the Democrats. The Republicans don't have policies for working people. Honestly, they don't. Unless you are extreme upper middle class, and I mean, your family is worth millions, it's not working for you. And you really have to study yourself. You got to go out there and find out what are the policies of not just the two parties, but the people that run for these offices. Find out what are they trying to do. Because that's the main thing we don't do. You got to study to show yourself approved. You got to get out here and, you know, say, look, I need to know what's going on. Because really, you the polity. I, I, I said this when I spoke at a, our, our function a couple of Saturdays ago. You are the polity. 
which is why we have politics. You are the ones that are governed. So you want policies that make sense for you. And unfortunately, <laughs> government is setting up policies that make sense for big business, which is why we're at the point now where what? We're down to 6% union representation in the country. Down from a high of, it was 26% in 1970. That's why I said, after they passed that Civil Rights Act and that Voting Rights Act and had to include black people into this system, things changed drastically, okay? And that's why I said, are you tired of racism? You guys know that's my... That's where I stand. I got the T-shirts made, and you know, we wasted three or four years asking if Black Lives Matter actually started in 2015, so we didn't waste about 10 years. When the real question is, are you tired of racism? And that goes for black folks as well as white. That goes for everybody in this country because we are under a system that is racist. And because we're under a system that is racist, nobody's really winning. No one is winning. That's what we got to recognize. No one is winning but the big folks, the big cheeses, the money folks, the 800 billionaires I've told you about. They're winning. You're losing. What are they giving you? They're giving you health care that you can't afford. They're giving you a Social Security and Medicare, well, uh, Medicare for one, that unless you your parent goes on Medicaid, you're going to be broke, okay? You're going to be broke. Because if you have to put them in a nursing home, the average cost of a nursing home today is between forty-seven dollars and $7,000 a month, okay? Not a year, not a half a year, a month. That's more than university tuition. So now you're paying up to $70,000 a year for what is really subpar. I mean, they pay these young girls that work in these places. And, and the irony is, I, my mother's in one of these homes, and she done bounced around about two or three of them. And it's nothing but black women working these homes. They are the caregivers. They are the ones that work in the homes. They're not nurses. They're, they're nurses' assistants most of the time. They got some kind of nurse assistant de degree or something. And and they pay them like $13, $14 an hour. And the turnover is ridiculous. You'll see a girl for maybe one or two months, and then she's like, I got to move on to another one, see if I can get a dollar or two more hours somewhere. But your, your costs are fixed, <laughs> okay? You're going to pay that forty seven to seven thousand dollars a month no matter who's working it. These are issues that we're gonna have to deal with. Because we already know the baby boomers, okay, sixty four is the last year for the baby boomers. That means you're sixty. You just turned sixty. You're getting old. I'm fifty nine myself. I'm what you call generation X, but some guy at the job told me I'm I might as well be a baby boomer. <laughs> you know? So look, what do you want from government policy? We well, didn't gave us everything else to distract us. They even gave us gambling. The Supreme Court decided, you know what? We're going to waive the statute that said you can only have gambling in New Jersey and Nevada. Now the whole country can have gambling. This is a distraction, folks. They said since they did that in 2017, seven years, do you know how much money we as Americans have spent on gambling? $800 million. Gambling, folks. And that doesn't include the lottery. That's the online gambling. So a lot of these states that allow it now are saying, you know, we got to rein this in. Because what they thought were people were just going to gamble on the game to see who win or lose. <laughs> now, you can gamble real time to see if a guy going to make a shot. Who going to score a touchdown? Um, are they going to get a first down in football? 
Real time, you constantly gambling. So you're on the phone, boop, boop, boop. And you wake up the next day and you lost two, three thousand dollars. You don't even realize it. Amazing. So this is what they've given us with policy. They've given us a lot of opportunities to be distracted. And that's really what the people calling on the phone. Matter of fact, unfortunately, our phones are down here at HPR Studios this morning because there's a lot going on. We had the thunderstorm and all of that just rolled in and right out of here. So they're working on it. We probably won't have it during this show. But we're going to have a guest, though, at 930. And we're going to talk about what's going on here in Detroit. We're going to talk about the ballot, what's on the ballot, and, and we're going to talk about how to interpret what's on the ballot because people don't realize it ain't just about the president. Locally, you're going to have a lot to vote on. And this is that time of the year where you're going to vote on some things. And we're going to talk about that. So that's good. That's why I love feedback. Ms. Broden had this show on over 20 years, folks. And you think it's easy getting up every Monday? I only do this two Mondays out the month. And I'm tired. But she's down here every week. She had to take a break, of course. She comes in here. She goes, gets guests. Brother Thabiti come on the other two weeks of the month. Timothy Smith, our illustrious engineer, is here every Monday. And we put this show on to get you the information. And that's important because the research, like I said, we are a political think tank. We are nonprofit. We are connected to nonprofits. So we we make alliances with other nonprofits that's out here doing things. So we got people that are members of the Lions Club. I don't know if you guys are familiar. It's the largest international business organization in the world. When you come into any city, you'll see it up there that with the Rotary Club and then the Lions Club had an L in the middle. That's the Lions Club. And um, they do great work. And um, that's another reason, you know. You want to get involved with organizations. Involved with Brother Malik Yakini, Detroit Food Co-op. They just put up that beautiful grocery store over there on Woodward and Euclid. If you get a chance, get on over there and check it out. That's important that we support one another in our endeavors. Because this is a co-op, which means you become a member. If I recall, I'm, I think it's still $200, because I'm a member. It was $200 when I came in. Become a member, and now you're an owner of that establishment. It's a cooperative. You want to cooperate, get involved. That's important. Other organizations. We just had Kyrie Frazier down here. Detroit is different. They just came in as a partner with Hood Research. They doing a, a collard green cook-off <laughs> in August. <laughs> that should be fun. These are the things that you might not be aware of. But if you go to the Hood Research site on Facebook, you'll see all of this stuff, all these different organizations. Of course, Ms. Broughton, she's a member of just about everything. When she's in something, she's always involved heavily. So, you know, she uh, works with the Barton McFarland Neighborhood Association. They have constant meetings about what's going on in the neighborhood over there. And that's over there in the Joy Road, Schaefer, Wyoming area, Oakman, all the way up through McFarland. I think McFarland's a middle school. And um, this, is, this is what's important. People are always wondering what's going on in the city. It's easier to get involved with groups that are doing the work. And of course, the individuals that are part of Hood Research. Folks, if you join Hood Research right now, Anthony Brogdon, historian, author, all around incredible gentleman, you get this book, the Black Business Book, folks. Free with your membership. $20 membership individual, $40 membership business. Lifetime, 300 individual. Lifetime membership for a business, $500. You get this beautiful book. And, of course, 
It's signed by the author. I don't know if you can see it because of the glare there. But it's signed. Signed book. Beautiful thing. Hood Research. That's why I bring these every every week. The Hood Research membership packs. They got flyers in there from various businesses that we promoted on the air here. You got Brother Cannon over there in Inkster. He's one of the people we didn't promote it. Go on over there and check him out. Got some clothes, you know, good, good deals. Man, suits. I buy all my crew neck sweaters and my turtleneck sweaters from them when the wintertime roll around because you're going to get you a good deal. And shoes, man, suits, everything. This guy's got everything. And he's about to uh, open up a new shop. People doing good things out there. Sister LaShonda Bartell. You need copies made. You got a funeral coming up. You need obituaries made. Digimax, right over there on Six Mile, a few blocks west of Southfield Road. Go on on in there. Say you heard about them on feedback. Man, it's going to be interesting. They're going to take care of you. Bartell family, as you know, they they involved in all types of businesses, especially along the Avenue of Fashion there. You know, Algernon got Times Square clothes. I go in there and get my suit from Times Square. I ain't gonna kid you, very, very nice suits, and I've been buying them for me and my son for, geez, at least 15, 16 years now. It's been a long time. I do business with the brother over there. Went to school with Brother Rufus, Simply Casual. I'm giving them all shouts out because you gotta shout out these black businesses, folks. You know, when you get involved with business, you're gonna get involved with politics because <laughs> Business and politics, poop, connected. They go together. So you concerned about black business, you concerned about the politics that the black businesses what have to deal with. That's important. Because you don't want to wait till the last minute and then deal with a situation. Because I'm telling you, you go through that. Like, they were talking about the Essence Festival in New Orleans here recently. And I guess Essence, you know, had worked with the city council and they pretty much push the black businesses out because they had their sponsors, the big sponsors wanted all of this sway, hold so much sway, and, you know. So they, people just, you know, going up telling the city council, we, we pay taxes here too, but they didn't know what was going on ahead of time because nobody was down there checking. You got to constantly be involved with politics. That's why you need advocates. And that's why you get involved with these nonprofits because we like advocates for the people. Timmy Tim said, we coming down to the break. We got a guest coming on, coming up on the bottom of the hour. Who we got in the building there? What's your name? Bernard? What's your last name, Bernard? Wayne Bernard. Wayne Bernard. Oh, okay. Wayne Bernard will be on the bottom of the hour. We going to talk with Brother Bernard, and we going to talk some politics, what's going on in the city. That's another brother. I met him at the function at... Uh, it was the Barton McFarland Neighborhood Association piece, and I'm telling you, this brother does his homework. He comes down, and he was on him. Like, we got to change some things. So you're going to enjoy this next 30 minutes, folks. It's going to be fun. Stay in tune. Go, as, we, as Ms. Brown would say, go get your orange juice, your drink. Maybe you didn't cooked up some scrambled eggs or something early this morning and some bacon. And sit down and relax. TV. 33, we got you cut. I'm telling you, HPR, I love it. Brother Timothy Smith, take us to the bottom of the hour. We're going to get Brother Bernard in here to settle in and talk politics and his love for the city of Detroit. I'm James Ford, founder of the Obama Weekend and a partner of the Hood Research Team, composed of the knowledgeable Theo Broden, the super analyst Henry, and the colorful Al Martin. This team discusses politics, seen and not seen, at the national, state, and local level. But to enhance the goals of this team, join or donate to Hood Research by visiting Twitter or Facebook or visit hoodresearch.org or call 248-234-2371.
You can also join Hood Research on Phonecast every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 978-990-5000, access code 338-729. Thank you very much. It's the These Nuts Show with your host, Butter, and friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. All right, everybody, settle, Butter. You're on in five, four, three, two. Come on, a few seconds. There's gotta be enough to get out of this one. Twist, a little turn, ta-da! It's showtime. It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know where my man is. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru, Wally Wama. I wouldn't warm it here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond Cruz here, sliding in with the news. Distance is what we must do to stay away from the... La, 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 chin and other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win. Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Too good to miss be here to say, don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, mask, and social distance today. Morgan Raisin. Yes, it's me. Here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine. Teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe from the... La, la, chew! That's trying to get on me. Butter me up! She's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. <laughs> Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the... La, 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 chew! Germ! We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Good morning. We got a brother that's been working and doing things in the community for quite some time. We got Brother Wayne Bernard in the building. To speak about, we're going to go over the ballot and see what's on the ballot. And we're going to talk some politics and some social situations. We got to get together, Brother Bernard said. Wayne Bernard, introduce yourself to our listeners. Hey, how you doing, sir? Uh, Wayne Bernard here, uh, Wadsworth Community Block Club, District 7, and on the ballot for Precinct Delegate. All right. On we... this ballot right here that we're going to discuss. Okay, all right. Now, exactly what do Precinct Delegates do? Well, delegates, they post a delegate and get the president in. Okay. And then you tell people about who's on the ballot mm -hmm. and what this ballot is representing and what it is. Mm -hmm. That's so, what a delegate, that's what I was taught that a delegate mm -hmm. does. So you and, guys are like the liaison yes. between the various political, like state reps and senators and the people. And the people. Yes. But really, the delegate is really supposed to work, really, for the people. But he's supposed to work for the candidate, too, if the candidate is paying. Mm. 
Yes, if the indeed. candidate is paying yeah, a delicate yeah, yeah. You can get out there. The right. You can get out there. And folks, this is an elected position. Like he said, you got to vote for it. He said, the paper down, because it's glare. You can't hardly see what it said. Don't worry about it. We're going we gonna to go over all of this in very shortly during this segment here. So, like he said, he's a precinct delegate, which means you got to run for office as a precinct delegate. Yes. You have to be on the ballot, and people have to actually vote for you. There it is. Cast folks. a vote. For the delegate. So that's what you call getting involved with what's going on in your city. And that's important. And I know when we were speaking at the um, Barton McFarland Neighborhood Association, you had a lot to say about what's going on. Now, you work a lot with the police department over there at the 12th precinct. Yes, Not the 12th precinct, the second, second precinct. precinct. Right, second precinct. And you get involved. Tell us a little bit about some of the things you do dealing with them over there. Well, I talk with Commander Vasquez mm -hmm. and some of the other officers. They, they change up, but some of them are retired, but right now they have given us Commander Vasquez. Mm -hmm. And we work with the Neighborhood Cleanup, which is in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. Wadsworth Community Block Club. Mm -hmm. Now, where is that neighborhood? What is that, Wadsworth? That is Schaefer and Plymouth okay. area uh, over there, uh, West Side. Okay. And uh, we work hard. We had six blocks under her, and we are of uh, called Paveway mm -hmm. Community. It's a Paveway Association okay. over there. Okay. Which, uh, something they did I didn't like, but I caved because the people, they wanted the park for the children. Okay, good, good. And uh, the park's name was Coleman Alexander Young. Okay. They took his name off the park and came in with Shirley Greenbelt. Well, who is Shirley Greenbelt? Thank you, sir. Who <laughs> right. is Shirley Greenbelt? Right. It's the name of a street <laughs> named Shirley. Okay. And oh, they, put and they just slapped the green belt on because they just slapped the green belt. Uh, okay. Now, where is this located? It's on the same. It's on Plymouth. It's on Plymouth. Uh, okay. I'll tell you the address: fourteen two five zero. Plymouth It's Road. behind the Universal plant that just went in uh -huh. that used to be American Motors. Okay, that's on the other side of it's Plymouth the Head towards side. like, yep. okay, Shirley I know you're talking about. on the other side right. of this plant. Right, Uh Going back I know what you're talking about. Allenby. Where they used to have that old AMC Plymouth yes. plant over there. Yes. Yeah, okay. And Coleman Young's name was on this park. Wow. Well, see, that's why I say, folks, things are happening when you're not watching, which is why you need gentlemen like this to be out there and to, and to be your eyes and ears. Because that's mainly what you are. You out there letting people know what's going on. And, you know, like you said, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But somebody got to be out there getting it done. Well, can we explain how this went? Yes. There was a deed, and you can't really see it. No, you it. can't see it with that, but explain. But I'm going to explain what this deed is. Mm -hmm. It's a fraudulent deed. And uh, I bought the papers about Alicia Bell. She's a... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne County Commissioner. Fraud right. deep. Mm -hmm. Alicia Bell, Wayne County Commissioner. Right. She was calling out deeds that were fraudulent. Okay. Deed and uh and the guy that's over the deeds, his name is on this deed, mm -hmm. biggest day. Bernard Youngblood. Now he's the recorder of deeds. Yep, he's mm -hmm. the recorder of the deed. Mm -hmm. And he said he didn't know what was going on with the deed fraud. But his name is on the deed. Now, what is this the deed to? This is the deed to the park. To that park. Okay, got The you. park, Shirley Greenbelt. There it is. Mm -hmm. a, a Chrysler Corporation. And it says 12101 Shirley. Right. Chrysler Corporation. Mm -hmm. So Chrysler came in, and they wanted the parking. They wanted Allenby. Nope. I take that back. They wanted Mecca Thornton. Mecca Thornton. And then there's my street, Wadsworth. Okay. We didn't give them our part. Mm -hmm. We said, we had a park here. We spoke up. Mecca and Thornton didn't speak up. Okay. They took their part and made it into a parking lot. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's why you need representation, folks. Somebody got to speak up for you. They took it and made it into a parking lot. And if you go over there now, brother, they don't dump everything in this parking lot, and it's not even a parking lot. Oh, my God. It's goodness. a lot so where now they're just dumping blight. at. It's blight. Okay. 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 And they knew about it for mm -hmm. years. 
And Sheila Cockrell, I'm saying names. Okay. I would go and say other names that were on the council at the time. Mm -hmm. They said it was never a park over there. Okay. So I advocated and said there was a park because I was a little boy that played at this park. At this park, okay. At this park, and it had Coleman Alexander Young's name, name on it. it. Mm -hmm. They took his name off and went with the Shirley Green. <laughs> Shirley Green. And then it was a fraudulent deed made. Mm -hmm. they just see, made the deed is not deed. even made, right? right. See the deed? Mm -hmm. You can see it, but the, the people on, at home cannot yeah, they see, can't it. see it. But they can't see it. They but definitely going to take your word for it. This is a deed, folks. This is a deed I'm, I'm with a, misspelled I'm, words. Right. And some of it's not even all the way. So they kind of rushed through it. They rushed through it. Mm -hmm. And then it was uh, for $39,000. That's okay. no money <laughs> for all that land. Right. The land went all the way back to Allenby. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But this was a big mess. But mm -hmm. this happened between a deed fraud mm -hmm. and this person that we're talking about, Bernard Youngblood, he's on the ballot, you mm -hmm. all, to get back in for register of deed. Mm -hmm. And no one is running against him. He's running on the polls. Yeah, he's see running on the polls. Folks, we're going to go right to this ballot piece now because, <laughs> folks, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. If you don't have a gentleman like this out here advocating for you, you're in trouble. This is why you get involved with hood research and the like, because all you got to do is support these organizations that's doing things, and then we help these people get things get things done and get out there and get exposure, make moves, let you know what's going on, because that's important, because you don't want to wake up one day and somebody took your park and turned it into a parking lot. You looking up and they got bulldozers in there, like, wait, what's going on? Because you didn't know, you didn't come to any meetings, you didn't find out. They're not going to let you know what they're going to do. They're just going to do it. And, and that's important, And which is why you got to be aware. But the good thing is we're here today. We're going to talk about this ballot, which you're going to be voting on. Okay, no. And that's important. Now, folks, Tuesday, August the 6th, it's coming up. The primary coming up. And we pretty much know in Detroit, the primary like the general election. Once you get this out of the way, those are going to be pretty much the people you're going to vote for because it, it's pretty much democratic. Let's start with, we got a run for United States Senate coming up. And uh, that's Debbie Stabenow's seat. She's retiring. And we got Brother Hill Harper running for that seat and Alyssa Slotkin, the congressperson. Woo! What do you think about this race, Brother Bernard? Well, I think we need new blood because the lady that's in there now, she's more conservative. This is just my opinion, people. She's more conservative. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have not seen her in my neighborhood. I have not <laughs> seen her come to my neighborhood. I have not seen her. Yeah, well, yeah. Now, Hill Harbor... <laughs> I've seen this brother, yeah. met this brother before he said he was going to do politics. I met him when he was an actor, mm -hmm. and he told me he was going into politics. Mm -hmm. The brother didn't lie. No? <laughs> he did not. And this was by, oh, more 10 years ago. Okay, okay. No, it might have been, might have been seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I saw him. He, I seen him a couple of times in Detroit. Right. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to get into politics. I said, yeah, right, right. <laughs> And, and he said he came here because we had him did. on a few months ago. He said he came to Detroit because it's a gritty time. And, uh, you know, he wanted his son to be, uh, not only is it gritty, he said, but it's a family feel here. Everybody look out for one he another. He might not remember me. It was at one of the functions that they have in WCP. I okay. Was at it, mm -hmm. And it was another function. I'm not going to say what that function Right, right, was, right. But. He was there, and he said he was going to run and, in politics. He didn't say running. what he was right. going to do. He's running. But he is on the ballot. He's on that ballot, and folks, uh, and he's he got a coffee shop down there in the campus yes. marshes there. Yes, he does. So he has invested in the city, and um, he said he's going to put his heart into this. And so, I think he has bought a home here in Detroit. Yes, he has. He's moved here. And uh, you got to be here at least, what, two years to be on the ballot? Okay. So, yeah, he's definitely been here. Then, uh, you know, we hope for the best. We need to we, – I need to see a platform, though, from Brother Hill Harper. That's what I haven't seen. I know he's running for office. But, Senator, I want to see what your platform is as the senator because we got a lot going on coming up, coming down the pike for these senators to vote on. 
you got Donald Trump already saying if he get in office, he going to get rid of all of the African-American uh, lawyers in the Justice Department. Wow. These are things that people don't realize they trying to do. They trying to make sure you averaged out. And, and people, I don't think people are talking about this, though, Brother Bernard, but I think he's going to take another shot at Obamacare if he get back in there. He's going to try to cut that out this time. He, if they get the Senate back, the Republicans, I think they're going to wipe out Obamacare. When he, when he got rid of Roe versus Wade, people should know that's it right there. Hey. Hey, that, that, should, that should be the wake-up call He said he was going to do it. Right. And, and let's just be honest. <laughs> that man was in office for four years and didn't do anything but cause problems. Yes. They, all they did legislatively is have a tax cut for the rich. For the rich. Now, yeah, you got a small tax cut, but yours weren't permanent. Your tax cut was about seven years. They're going to expire after seven years. What's seven years in your lifespan? That ain't much. And then the heart of the tax cut was paid for by getting, cutting down your mortgage interest deduction. Yes. And, and capping it at 10000 So if you got a home and you got a home worth three, dollars $400,000, you know how much you're paying in interest. And it is more than $10,000. There's a lot of money depending on where you're located. So everybody getting hit. I don't understand how working people can believe that Republican policy helps them. I just, I don't get that. But, you know, it is what it is. Let's see, we got a lot of people running unopposed on this thing. Yes, we do. Rashida Tlaib is running unopposed. No one's running against Congress, 12th District. Let's see. We, and we that's got, our district. That's our district. So Ms. she's Ms. the one that we're going to unopposed. send to Washington wow. to now, speak for us. You were saying earlier about this redistricting. Now, I know that this district used to be the ninth district when i ran back in 2020 mm -hmm. now it's the fourth district so well, what have they done have they cut down the number of districts no they they strengthened the area they condensed it mm -hmm. and then broadened it in certain areas and then strengthened it in another area okay to push out certain people Okay. In one area to bring uh, more people gotcha. in on another area. So they probably that would look like to me. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. They probably expanded the Dearborn part then. Yeah. Because I know we had a small subset of Dearborn in there mm -hmm. on the other side of Warren up to Paul Street. So yes. they probably added more of that. Added more of that. Okay. Because those people now have a voice and yeah. they don't know that they have a voice. <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> I tell you, folks, this is what politics looks like today because you're not getting involved. I mean, I ran against this sister just because at the time she was like, I'm for Trump and I'm with Trump. And they censured her because of that stuff. You know, the uh, 13th district censured her. And like, look, you know, you can't be saying all of this stuff. And uh, me and another sister named Ogburn, we ran against her. And uh, if we would have come together. He's talking about Karen Winsett. He's talking about Karen Winsett. We could have beat this sister. But she already good. She a good sister. She, didn't, she woke up because of that. Because we put the heat on her, she recognized that I got to do more for the community. So she does a lot more with what we're doing out there. And that's what you got to do, folks. You got to challenge these people. Because I think this will be her last term. Yeah. Because people don't realize it used to be, folks, you used to only have three terms for these state reps. Mm -hmm. Six years. They went back and voted in 2021 to extend that to six terms. Ooh. So now they get 12 years. <laughs> you don't know that because you ain't checking on people. You ain't joining hood research. You ain't joining this brother, Wadsworth Association, the Neighborhood Association. You got to be a part of this to know what's happening. Because it ain't easy running around getting information. Which is uh, not Wadsworth community. It's Paveway. Oh. Paveway is an association. It was an uh, after cultural mm -hmm. Industrial and agricultural mm -hmm. uh, group. group of people. Mm -hmm. They really industrial. Okay. And if you come around there, you'll see it. All those businesses are around it. Okay. And I was asking Coleman Young Jr. Mm -hmm. said, why is your daddy's name on this park over here? I don't think he knew. There is a statue going up of Cal Coleman Alexander Young, mm -hmm. $900,000 this statue is costing. And it's going in Washington. I said, go ahead, Coleman. Really? Really? I haven't even heard about that. Yes. 
Now, where is he going in Washington? They putting us a, a bronze. It's a big bronze statue mm-hmm. going in Washington. Okay, okay. We I got read it. it. I was gonna bring the paper, but I didn't want to bring too much. No, no. It's but not I'm gonna. I, I came to Theo and told them about it, but mm. I'm going to keep advocating that people give money to him. Right, right, okay. If you have it. Mm-hmm. Five, ten dollars, mm. twenty. If well, I'm going to tell them to join groups like groups, yours yes. and mine. Okay, you, you can you donate really to that, that but statue. join the group first. Yes. You know, that's the main thing. So you can join help us yes. get out here and do work. Because yes. Ms. Broughton is always at the at the school board meetings and him. Yes. Just take you take gas money, all of this stuff. We we making copies of things and all this stuff takes money. And uh, you know, you need to advocate for something. And if you don't have time to do it because everybody working, you join that. And yes. that's showing that you we like your proxy. That's a good idea. <laughs> we like the proxy for the people. Get it okay. On. Now let's see, Kim Worthy, she's running on the polls for prosecuting attorney. Yes. Now the sheriff is running against someone. Okay, Brother Raphael Washington. Joan Merriweather. It's Joan Mary. Young lady, I met her. Okay, you met her. She yes. good people? Good people. Okay, folks. But I, I don't know if she's going to be able to get the word out because mm-hmm. this guy, he's pretty, he's right. out there. and they, But then I hate It's hard to be the incumbent. It's hard to be the incumbent, right? It's hard to be the incumbent. You got to get out it's here. Hard. It's hard to be the incumbent. You got to like get you your say. name back. You know, you got to get out here and knock on doors. I, I literally walk the streets. All over the place, from Joy Road down there, all the way as far as Evergreen. Yeah. Knocking on door, putting out signs. You got to work it. You got to work it. I did a lot. And this cold cost you, you all spend at least 20000 And that's just for state rep. You got to get at least $20,000 to get going, folks. So you're going gonna to need to get people in your corner, in the back you, because it costs a lot to get all these signs. I'm sure it costs more now, because that was 2020 during the pandemic. Everything costs so much more now. It's yes. Ridiculous. Let's see. Of course, Kathy Garrett, does she ever lose? She, she's a clerk. <laughs> well, ain't kind of clerk. She get it done. She but the against. guy that she's running against, no one even know who he is. Yeah. Howdy Taraf, excuse me. Howdy Taraf. <coughs> so I haven't heard anything about him. I haven't seen his sign. I've seen him, but I didn't know he was running until I saw it on the ballot. Copy that. So that's another so thing. So I'm like, wow. That's, and ain't no really body been knocking on doors. No. You know, usually you got a few people you can see. I have like three people working for me. Now, we had an event over at uh, the Elks Club. Mm-hmm. A lot of people showed up, but they showed up early. I said they showed up early and dropped their literature off and then went other places. Then, I said, didn't, 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 didn't interact with the move. people. Right. Wrong move. Okay. A couple of people that. stayed around mm-hmm. and talked to some of the candidates. Right. But... And some, I mean, some of these the citizens, right? Constituents, the, right? The citizens. Mm-hmm. But I said, not enough. Mm-hmm. I said, how do you drop your literature off and then <laughs> you don't stay? So my, well, I come early, yeah. early. Okay, we vote early. You gotta understand, some people have already voted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and some the people seniors. still deciding the senior, to vote. Right? Because I vote early. I get my absentee ballot there you every go. year. Get it out vote the way. early and yeah. vote off. Yeah, you go. That's and, what uh, was told to me my, by the, the people oh, that I stand on, the shoulders I stand on, yeah. the Jesse Hoopers, the Marie, Marie Thornton. Okay, all those right. People. And, 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 and you, and you guys know Marie Thornton. She's yes. she been community active, ooh, goodness, for yes. decades. These are the people's shoulders I'm standing on. And that's important, folks. You, you know, you got to get out here. You got to get involved. And we lose, we have lost a lot of soldiers. Yes, if we I go, If I go down the line, I'll start crying. Hey, hey. Look, East Side Lady. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes, we lost them. Okay, these were fighters yeah. in this fight. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, we need more brothers out there fighting for me. Yeah, you know, brother Bernard. <laughs> yeah, and you were talking about your age. It's our age bracket, brother. That's really fall. Yeah, we're falling. Yeah, yeah. We have. Well, I. I can't speak for everyone, but mm. I'm 55 years old. Mm. I'm the Gen Xer, mm. but my generation, this is my opinion, mm-hmm. has dropped the ball. Well, you know. We think, oh, I got mine, you get yours. I think we the last best hope, though. Well, that's, uh, we, we are. We, we are we, it. You said it, brother. <laughs> We're it. Because these, unfortunately, I think our generation was the one that got bombarded with individualism. You know, we were we came up at a time when TV started becoming more prominent, um, video games. They started talking about millionaires more. 
you know. But you say we were spoiled? Well, we, I think the program and what we were exposed to, I don't think we were so much spoiled, but we were exposed to different type of stimuli than the baby boomer. You know? okay. TV wasn't yeah. even big for the baby boomer. No. For us, The TV baby boomer was, stood in the gap for us, yes, though. Yes. And I thank you for that. I thank you. I thank you. Indeed. And, uh, you stood in the gap for me to get what I have. And, and that's important, you know. So now, you know, okay, I, we about to come up. Because we're going we gonna to hang out with Brother Bernard on the other side of this. Brother Tim said we got a few minutes till we get to the break. But um, we're going to talk about the entire ballot here and what's going on. Because, folks, I'm telling you right now. It's funny because I was thinking about the need to be connected to somebody. I, this morning my wife is out of town. My son had to go pick her up from the airport. And this arthritis ain't no joke. And I'm trying to button my top button. <laughs> and I'm having a hard time buttoning. I'm calling for my son. I realize he had left. And what you realize is, it's being independent stuff ain't all it's cooked up to be for. Some of y'all at home by yourselves, it ain't easy because it during COVID, like you had said, you know, a lot of people passed away. Nobody even knew they was dead right. until somebody knocked I on the door. Put the, the, the pictures out there on Bell Isle, mm-hmm. I knew of 25 people that are gone. See? See? It really hurt me. My coworker didn't want to go. Mm-hmm. And he said, I don't want to see that. So. Mm-hmm. I want to see. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what it's about, because really, we you part of the collective. You know, you ain't no real, you, you are an individual, but your strength is in the people you connected to. And, and we got to start learning to connect to one another. Because, I mean, all this individualism, that was something that they, they pushed on us in the 80s. That's why they say we the I, me, my generation, <laughs> you know. And, and I mean, let's just be honest, man. They killed the unions. They didn't kill. Oh. They didn't kill so much stuff that brought people together. And like you said, I came up at a time my father worked in the plant, but all the guys bowled together. That was a big thing to bring camaraderie. All the guys had a certain skill, so my father could call somebody up. He he, he did the basement and put up the panel. Had a guy to cut the tree down in the backyard. It was a plumber guy, that, and all these guys worked at the plant, but they had skill. They had do skills. other things, you know. and they work together. Yes. You ever read the little book, the uh, book, the little engine that could? Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> now, wasn't that better a better book to read than Clifford the Big Red Dog? <laughs> well, yes, yes. But they all—I mean, we want the kids reading. Yes. But we yes. want them to understand that you need folks. You can't do this alone. The little engine that could showed you that we have to work we together. Gotta work together. Yes. And then the brother turned around, white man. Israel, uh, I think it was Keats, okay. his name was. Mm-hmm. He wrote another book called John Henry. Yep, yep, worked and on he the did railroad. The illustration. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. those books. Yep. The Little Engine That Could, mm-hmm. The Snowy Day. Mm-hmm. Those books. Right. Those are the books that children need to be reading about themselves. Ooh, love. For we didn't got off onto some stuff. Look, Tim said we got to go to the break. We're going to go to the break. We'll come on the other side, folks. Brother Wayne Bernard. We talking politics, we talking community, and we talk about getting this getting things done. We'll see you on the other side. It's the These Nuts Show with your host Butter and Friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. Get out of this one. Twist a little turn. Ta-da! It's showtime. It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know to wear my mask. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru, Wally Wama. I wouldn't warm it here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond Cruz here, sliding in with the news. Distance is what we must do to stay away from the la, 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 chin and other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win. Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Too good to be here to say. 
Don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, mask, and social distance today. Morgan Raisin. Yes, it's me. Here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine, teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe from the... La, 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 that's trying to get on me. Butter me up. She's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. <laughs> Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the ah, 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 We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. Hello, I'm James Ford. I survived the red light runner, but will you? You know, Michigan has had 1,123 auto accident deaths a year. That's 21 per week. We know Detroit alone has 156 deaths, and that equals three a week. Those stats do not include the 550 people that are crippled and disabled a month. At 12 noon, September 18th, 2024, people in Detroit and other cities in Michigan will meet in Lansing state capital and complain about red light running, drag racing, and hallucinated driving. Yes, bring your lawn chairs. September 18th, Detroit and all Michigan cities will ask legislatures to enforce and enact laws that will stop drag racing and red light running and hallucinated driving. You know, this is not different than the Flint water crisis. People are dying. Join us Wednesday, September 18th, 2024. If you'd like, call 586-918-3061 for more information. Drag racing, red light running, hallucinated driving, it must stop. Stand up, September 18th. Call and share your input. Call 586-918-3061 or call 701-301 3118. Also, again, people of all nationalities, express your input and ideas at 586-918-3061 or 701-301-3118 to stop drag racing, red light running, and hallucinated driving. Thank you, and God bless everybody. Thank you. All media platforms are engaged. Copy. Get ready to launch your show or product. Periscope ready. We're 5x5 five five ready to launch. Copy that. Trend worldwide across all major platforms. Ignition. Three, two, one. The world is waiting. Watkins Broadcasting. More than just TV. Recover Now is a national campaign aimed at the education and awareness of the devastating effects of opioid and heroin abuse and curbing drug and alcohol addiction in the United States. Recover Now is sponsored by treatment facilities nationwide. Many of them have been where you are, and they want to help by spreading a message of hope and recovery. They're working hand-in-hand hand with major insurance companies nationwide that can help you or loved one get clean in 7 to 30 days. Recover Now is embarking on a national outreach campaign on TV and radio to promote anti-addiction messages. So if you, a loved one, or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, do not wait. A new life for you could be 30 days away. Call us right now. I promise this call can change your life. Sponsored by the Detox and Treatment Helpline. Call 855-723-6903. WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS Highland Park, Detroit. Feedback. 
feedback. Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback. I'm telling you, I'm excited once again. Miss Broughton took a break today, so you ain't seeing her on your monitor as usual. But in coming down to grace us with his presence, Brother Wayne Bernard, and we've been talking politics, community. And while I'm talking about community, Brother Bernard, I just want to say, last week we had Brother Oliyami Dabbles, though, the owner of Dabbles African Bee Shop over there on the boulevard at Grand River. All right. The city was coming in. They wanted to condemn this building. And you know that bee shop been there since, he said, 2001. So that's 23 years, for. They want to just say, well, I know the building behind it, and it's got some structural problems. But I'm sure they could have tore that down and left that his building standing. They want to tear everything down. <laughs> so we had posted on Facebook about a week before. We were going to have them on, and, you know, let the people know, look, we got to come together. We can't allow this. I want to thank everybody who came down to Dabbles that Tuesday morning, yes, yes. protesting. That's what it's about. People coming together to various groups and say, no, y'all y'all ain't doing this. And they stopped it. So now they back in talks. You'll have a reprieve, and we're going to figure this out. So, folks, that's what it's about, Brother Bernard. You know, Brother Davos, hey, stay with us. Keep us abreast of what's going on. All right, Brother Bernard, we're going over this ballot here. Okay. We down to your friend, uh, Register D, Brother Bernard Youngblood. Running on the polls. Running on the polls. Mm. And Eric Sabri, treasurer, is also running, running on, on the, the polls. polls. Now, I think somebody should at least go for that treasurer. Now, Eric right. Sabri is the treasurer of Wayne County, and Bernard Youngblood is the register of deeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and neither one of them have anyone running against them. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. That's Isn't why we got to get involved, folks. You got to get involved. And that's why we need organizations. You need money. It's hard to go up against cats that billionaires are funding and all of this But can stuff. I say this too, brother, Mark? I ran in 2009. Mm -hmm. Janice Winfrey threw my signatures in the garbage. Wow. Yes. And she said they weren't valid, but they weren't valid. But I, I didn't have money to fight all these lawyers. I didn't have all that money. I had the money to run. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, boy. I said, leave it alone, Wayne. Let's leave it alone. Let that go. And then I found out who they chose to run. Mm -hmm. You all, in 2009, I ran when Charles Pugh ran. Okay. And the Spivey kid with the bow tie. Right, right, Spivey. Uh, Both Spivey. of them ended up going to jail. Mm, yep, 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 you're right. And I said, right. we got what we got. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you who else ran, uh, Roy McAllister. He mm. went back. He yeah. said, you ought to come back. I said, <laughs> I said, I seen what she did the first time. Uh -huh. I said, you got to remove her. Mm. And then maybe, mm. maybe someone to have a good shot, mm. a clean mm. shot, especially when they spend like ten thousand dollars to run. Ooh boy! And I'm gonna tell you. And then you, someone throw your signatures in the garbage, and yeah. you did a good run. We've had quite a few people that's over that Detroit Election Commission <laughs> that's made life miserable for the citizens of Detroit. And I can go back to when this is to me. Brother Bernard, when everything changed, back in 97, 98, actually 98, we all came together and said, you know what, we're going to create a community coalition because we wanted to get Dennis Archer out of there. Whoa. He was, we were going to recall Dennis Archer. And we went and got all those signatures at the time. I think we needed 100,000 signatures. We got all those signatures. And, and, and Jackie Curry did the same thing Dennis Winfrey did. They started striking signature, this one don't count, this one don't count, to the point where they couldn't put it on the ballot. Wow. Save Dennis Archer, because I don't think he would have won a recall election. And uh, we were going to have Barton run. I was on that recall, yeah, you? See, Yes, that's what I'm saying. And then what did they do? The big guys got to see who was involved with these organizations, and they came in and broke us off. So they clipped a few people here, they clipped some people there, and we know who they are. I ain't going to say no name. No. And got them out the way. And now the grassroots has been weakened. Very weakened. 
And that's the struggle. We trying to build back, as they say, build back better. We trying to build black better. <laughs> okay. Oh, say that. With the uh with this community coalition, because we gotta we gotta get grassroots back on. But that's why we here. This is a grassroots brother, feedback a grassroots show, hood research, community coalition is gonna be built right back better. That's why we got the full co-op and all these other organizations. What's the name of your organization again? Wireless Community Block Club, but it's Paveway Association. The Paveway Association. All of this stuff, we gotta pull them together. And get some things better. People need to know what Paveway is. It goes, it doesn't stop at Thornton like this one lady saying she Paveway Block Club. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> How is she Paveway Block Club? And it goes all the way to Myers and Greenfield. Wow. And it circles. Yes, it's real big. Okay. Paveway is real big. Okay. I think it's bigger than Bart McFarland. Okay. But don't, don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. I've seen some people, They no, someone's not going to just show you their deed. Mm hmm and say that they're part of Paveway because some of them are embarrassed mm. of what's going on over there. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. hey, how can they get in touch with you, Brother Bernard? Because I know there's some people out there want to get involved with Paveway living in well, that area. Well, my number is 313-505-5765. Uh, mm. Okay. And I'm, I live in Paveway. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're over uh, by the... Uh, church there, mm -hmm. Third New Hope. Mm -hmm. It's in our area. Mm -hmm. I say some... Uh, the one church is there, and I think they they got some of their land too. Uh, their name escapes me, but it's right. The church is right there. Uh, uh, that that church on Plymouth, that's yep. red. It's a little church there, and uh, the man, the pastor, just passed on. Okay. And they do the uh, food. They give away food Ooh, every Friday. Okay. That's good. That's and good they're Friday. they're they're working in the community. They are young couple though, but that church, I think. These people took some of their land too. Mm, okay. This this uh, deed thing mm, okay. took some of their land too. Wow, folks! And that's so, why I said, if you want more information, you got to call this brother. So you know, and we gonna rebroadcast this on YouTube, so you'll see it all. But this again. all falls with the Eric Sabri and the uh, Register of Deeds, right. Bernard Youngblood. And Bernard Youngblood is not black; he's a white man. Yeah, yeah. Not that I'm. Races or anything right, like that, yeah. but people actually thought it was a black man because the way his lot, name. The people don't do their homework. Yeah, man, I said you know? no, he's not yeah, black. He's yeah, white. They, 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 he's they, always they, been they, white. He's been there a long time. He's been there a long time, but and no one's running against him. Okay, so you all need yeah. to look at that. Indeed. And I I saw in the Michigan Chronicle, uh, uh, men of excellence, mm -hmm. black men mm -hmm. that can do something in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. You weren't in that. I want you in that. Yes, Men of Essence. Okay, well, we're going to get in it. Charles Williams. Okay, it, your brother, Charles Williams. You yes, just had the peace. King Solomon Church. Right. Mm -hmm. He should be in a man of excellence. Yes, yes, yes. Black brother. men that can run and run and win. And see, that's why I want to pull all these groups together because you yes. got Brother Calvin, man, good father's own. You got Quan Fish, the Trey Fatherhood Network. Yes. You got Brother Otis Bellinger, he doing things. You got Brother John Sloan with the Black Men Build. Build, yes. These are a lot of brothers doing stuff. We're going to we pull it all together. Got to, just, got it, to. Just, it take time because, you know, everybody got to do it. And I'm doing my own podcast, folks, about to be coming out called all right. Black Man Battling. And we didn't already had a chance to interview brother, good brother Dabbles. We had him on. We about to have on an ex-Negro League baseball player that got a home run off of of all people, folks, and you know nobody could hit no home runs. No. Off of that brother, you know, Satchel Page. Wow. <laughs> okay, so okay. it's going to be an interesting brother Ford. I just want to say, Brother James Ford, thank you. He's he going to have him down there, 93-year-old brother. Okay. We're going to talk about that. All right. All right, let's get through this. We almost done. We okay. got the United States Senator again, Sandy Pensier, Mike Rogers, Justin Amash. And Sherry O'Donnell. Oh, that's on Republican side. Yeah. But we still have to read it. It's still there. Still got to read it. Still got to read it. They, 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 Matter what you are, Republican or Democrat, we're here to discuss the ballot. Right. And most folks know Mike Rogers. You know, yep. He, Everybody know Mike Rogers. <laughs> and he, 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 he's something else. Man. Yeah. And, uh, Trump is pushing Trump, him on that commercial. Y'all have to. And watch that commercial. It's telling certain things. Mm. And, you know, like the how they say it, uh, sometimes it. You can tell on yourself uh -huh. what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Uh, yeah. Okay? And that's why you got to watch closely. <laughs> and you got to watch shows like Fever to see what's going on. 
Okay, running in Congress, 12th District, you got Linda Sawyer, James D. Hooper. I don't know these guys, like you said. Uh, I know I know the Linda Sawyer and I know the James D. Hooper, not Jesse James Hooper. Okay. That was my friend. Jesse James Hooper was a friend. He was a grassroots and was a fighter. Okay. Who lived in Paveway. I'm glad you said that because they might have thought that was him. Thank you. That's why I wanted to make that clear because he's no longer with us. Mm. But I did see some ballots go out that some people are no longer with us, but mm -hmm. them ballots are still going out. Okay, got you, okay? got you. Let's see what else we got here. Hmm. Let's see. Representative State District 4. They ain't messing around, messing with Karen Winsett. They just said forget it. We ain't yeah, they not him. running against him. No one's running yeah, against him. They not running against Kim Worthy. Nope. Now, they did send two people for sheriff spot. They got a Artisha Bowman. Bowman. And T.P. Nikoriak. I don't know. T.P. Nikoriak. Yeah. <laughs> I met the Nikoriak. Okay, so that's He used to him. come to the Democrat, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, I'm mistaken, uh, charge it to my head, not to my heart. Gotcha. I saw that name a couple of times mm -hmm. when I would go to the Democratic conventions. Okay, okay. But, it, you know, hey. Hey. Yeah. He, he might have switched Sometimes they switch just to, you know, get a little more name recognition. Yeah. And get a little money. Well, <laughs> clerk. Ain't nobody running against Ain't nobody Garrett. Ain't nobody running against Garrett. No. And ain't nobody messing with Eric Sabri on the no. Republican side. Now, the register of these, this guy named Afaf Ahmad. He's Afaf right. Afaf Ahmad. Mm -hmm. That name sounds so familiar. Okay. But I don't know if it's the same guy because it was another guy mm -hmm. over in uh, the Koenig area named okay. Ahmad. Okay. Well, he's running against Youngblood. He was over there in the... Uh, how they said the Conic Gardens. Conic Garden, okay, guys. But I, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Now we getting down to judicial. Okay. Circuit Court, Third Circuit Court, non incumbent position. You got three people running. I haven't. I don't know any of these people. Let's see. Nicole Legan Katska, John Larkin. I've seen his name on the ballot a few times. That mm -hmm. Larkin guy. And Adrian Scruggs. Now Adrian Scruggs, I met her. Okay. She was at the event over here at. Uh, on the west side, mm -hmm. uh, oh boy, the church we just went that I saw Bernard Youngblood. Mm -hmm. uh, it escapes me right now. Okay, all right. All right. But that we, I've met her, mm -hmm. and uh, so she, I, she we should like closely a look lady. at her. We okay. should closely look at her. Okay. Got you, got you, folks. Now you heard that. You said Sister Scrubs. See where she's Adrian been Scrubs. and where she wants to do. Right. Look her up. And look her up. You know, Google them. Usually they have the number to the office, and give them a call. It don't hurt to call. These people, because I was getting a lot of calls when I was running for office. What are you doing? And what are you going to do for this and that? And you got to be ready to ask, because most of the time, the people don't put the numbers on the literature, because they don't want you to call them directly. No. You know, so let's get serious, folks. If they ain't got their number on there, don't mess with them. They ain't serious. Let's if they see. don't come in and leave their literature and come when they have a candidate's care right. form and they don't show and then they show and leave, mm -hmm. kind of look at that, too. That's right. That's right. Definitely, folks. Let's see. We got some proposals on the ballot. Yes, we do. Okay. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Proposals. P. Parks Millers renewal. Now, I'm going to read this off. Okay. So folks can hear the whole thing. You want to see it a little bigger, sir? Yeah. I think it's a little bigger in Let's this see. one. Yeah, it's a little bigger in this we got, one. We got read that. That's bigger a little print. bigger. I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> now, right on time with the bigger print. All right, <laughs> folks. For proposition P. Parks Miller's renewal to renew the Miller's authorized in 2020. Said so I ain't that long ago, folks. Shall Wayne County levy this millage in the 2023 rollback rate of 0.2442 mills? That's 24 cent per thousand dollars of taxable valuation for five more years. So let's see. If your house is worth fifty thousand dollars, it don't sound like a lot. That's about maybe eleven dollars, but still. When all your taxes, all these different millages, they add up. Let's see. Now, they claim they're going to continue to improve and operate several parks and related facilities, including Hines Park, which is further out there, uh, Elizabeth Park. I don't know where that is. I know where that is. Okay. Uh, Wayne County Family Aquatic Center is at Chandler Park. At Chandler that's, Park. that's nice. That's brand new almost. And improvements to municipal parks in the 43 counties as provided in the implementing ordinance through an annual allocation by commission district of the greater of $50,000 or 15% of total funds generated from that district on the condition that any year for which 
this continued levy will be imposed, Wayne County must budget from other sources an amount equal to its 1995-96 fiscal year appropriation for parks. Based upon the total estimated 2026 taxable value of $59 million for 59,252,000. Woo, that's a lot. That's a lot of money right there. This renewal is projected to generate about $14 million in 2026. And that's a yes or no, folks. That's a yes and no. But you got to look at it. Look at the wording real, real, real. They said we're going to renew the millage authorized in 2020 shall Wayne County levy, levy this millage mm -hmm. at a 2023 rollback. That's where you hold up. You going to roll back to 2023 and then you going to levy something on someone's apartment property value which you already own overtax the people and you gonna roll back and then levy on them again yeah some people have lost their homes this is true this and is now you're gonna levy a, and then i can say this i worked at chandler park i mm -hmm. worked out of chandler park none of the guys i work over there are working on that project mm. none of them are getting that money Wow. There's wow. a contractor over there doing that. Mm. And this is the county, folks. And this is the county. Mm -hmm. But we're right next door. Mm -hmm. Chandler Park, where we dock, where I used to dock at, we're right next door to this park, to the aquatic center. Mm -hmm. But it's Wayne County. But they want you to, to pay for this. Mm -hmm. City employees. <laughs> city well. people. The citizens of Detroit. They want you to pay for this. After you pay for that jail downtown that uh, Robert Ficano did too. Mm, yeah. Remember, we had to pay for that. Yeah, yeah. And then they got they people. they never finished. That they never finished. Right. Took our tax <coughs> yeah. dollars. They rolled back and levied on your property. Mm -hmm. Overtaxed you. Taxed you out. Some people out. Mm -hmm. They taxed all six of my dad's properties. Oh. It was five of us, and he helped my auntie get a house on the May and Gratiot over there on the east side. Her house is gone. Mm, that's rough. That is yep, rough. and now these, these land bank people come in. They get the house. They get to choose the house they want. For 10 years, they didn't pay taxes. Yeah, they give them tax abatements. They give them tax abatements. But who that tax go to? It went to the citizens of Detroit. Yeah. It went on the backs of the people who were here. That's why we were overtaxed. That's why they keep raising our assessments, because they got to get more out of us to fund all these tax abatements. And that's what this is. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's really a tax abatement, and it's asking you, do you want to levy this on your property for the, the amount back that goes back to 2003, and then they're going to roll it back. Mm -hmm. So well, they got to tell you in what... In the end, it's 24 cents six. for a thousand. And you know, most of our homes were uh, unfortunately we don't get too much value out of. You don't get a lot of value out of your home, uh, so out of your property. You can't even file on your property. Right, anymore. they'll assess it for about fifty something like that. So, like I said, it'd be about eleven dollars a year. It don't sound like much, but much when you much. add them up with all the other bond issues and everything else you're paying, because they got the garbage fee. They're yeah, putting the another fee, fee right. on you. That's Detroiters, right? That's Detroiters. Yeah, right, They're so. putting <laughs> another fee on. On the citizens of Detroit. Yeah, they hit us up pretty bad. Let's get this proposal L out the way, because we almost done. So I say <coughs> no. This is my opinion. I say a no on that one. Yeah, I ain't crazy about a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, I'm going to leave it alone for right now, because there's a lot going on out there, and we got to really study this stuff even better. And then we got to know what else we're paying taxes for, because we got bond issues and things, and this so stuff they, come up, and they just renew them. And not to cut you off, brother, mm -hmm. I would say no, because... They gave me a check for eight dollars and seventy-three cents. Okay. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> that was your refund. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. You ain't got to tell me. It's rough. Detroit is rough. <laughs> we get beat up bad. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice today because there's so much going on. I should have bought you some drink. I hey, you man. I didn't know you had it. It's that, all man. love. Let's get this proposal. This one for the library. Now. Oh. The library operated millage renewal shall the tax limitation on taxable property for operating and maintaining the Detroit Public Library be renewed for 3.9943 mills or four, about $4 per 
thousand dollars in taxable value. Now, that's a little more, folks. Four dollars, and uh, and that's for ten years. Ten years. Okay, so this is gonna last from July the first, twenty twenty-five, to July thirtieth, twenty thirty-five. This renewable, this renewal rather, combines two millages that voters approved in twenty fourteen, which expires in, of course, twenty twenty-four. Um, and then they're going to renew it in, well, it expires on June 20th, they said, 2025. Yes. And it's going to raise an estimated revenue of $42 million the first year if approved and 100% of the money collected. What do you think about this one? Well, if we get the right people on the Library Commission, mm -hmm. and uh, I like libraries. Mm -hmm. They help the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got a reading grant if they don't steal it. Mm-hmm. The children can read, can learn how to read. Some of them know how to read. It's mm -hmm. what you got them reading. Right. Like we discussed the books, Clip a Big Red Dog. I don't, I don't <laughs> recommend that one. It's a couple of books I want to recommend, but some people might not agree with. Mm -hmm. That a child should be reading right now. Mm -hmm. At the lay, at the lay, the grade level, they should be reading. Mm -hmm. You know, and not all these standardized tests and they doing to them. You know, yeah, to get so them to read. Oh, there's we, so much. We skip one. Let's do this one. Yep, they, we skip that eight. one. Okay. Yep, we skip that one. The but. Auditor Selection Amendment. Oh, okay. Shall the Wayne County Charter Section 3.119E be amended in part to allow the county's independent external auditor selected by a competitive bid to serve for a term of three years or more? No. Okay. Because you look at the part. Now, I read this to Theo, and she can't see. Mm. And she said, more? <laughs> Who getting more? Right away she picked up on it. Right, okay. <laughs> and, and she can't see. Mm, yeah, God rest it, I it love it. It doesn't say a, a limit to three years. It say three years or more. So they can decide to make it ten years. Thank you. Right, there you go. For, that's what I wanted you to say, mm. brother. They can go as far as they want. So I would say no on that one because mm -hmm. you don't know what they're doing with this money. Folks, join with what's going on. Check out Detroiters for Tax Justice. They'll let you know what's going on with these, like the, all of these different millages and things. And uh, you can go on Facebook and find them and know what's happening. Now, tell us real quick about you got a brother doing the jazz piece. Got a brother that's working. Uh, his name is Jazz Event with Lord Yangtze. Mm -hmm. Friday, July 19th, 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Free admission. Mm -hmm. Arrive early at 5 p.m. Now that's going to be at the uh, Adam Second Bustle. Precinct is pushing this. Mm -hmm. The police are pushing this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at Adams Bustle Recreation Center, the parking lot, mm -hmm. zero, 10500 Linden Street. Mm -hmm. That's in Paveway, people. That's in our area. All right. That's not, it's more like Finkel area, but mm -hmm. it's still there. Right. And I think it might be part of Paveway, but I'm going to look into it. But I know it's part of the uh, Finkel. Mm -hmm. That's down in Finkel Illinois Corridor. and Wyoming. Yep, Living Noise in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. So there, it's part of their it's association over there, too. Yeah, come on out and get a little jazz. Come on out and get some jazz. This brother's real good. Yes, indeed. And, and uh, Ken, uh, yeah. the wind set. What she got going on? She has a community health resource fair coming up. Good, good. And that's uh, the date is, uh, save the date, July 27th uh, at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And this will be at the Boys and Girls Club, the Southeast Michigan, uh, 424 Collingwood. Collingwood. Yep. I used that's to play baseball be. over there, the Power League. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and this savages. sister is the state rep. She's the state rep. Yes, she is. And now let's see what else she got on here. It says... The following participants are scheduled to be at the event. Okay, gonna have the Detroit Health and Human Services gonna be there. Walmart, Detroit Fire Department, Wayne Metropolitan Community Action Agency, Henry Ford Health System, CVS. Oh my God, DTE and Wayne State University. You're gonna have free screenings and tests, healthy home resources, property tax assistance, water assistance, food support, mental health clinics, smoke detector giveaways, and go ahead and get one of them gun safety locks. Yes. Uh, yes. That's a good thing. If you got a gun, make sure it's locked. We don't need no more foolishness going on. And I'm going to read this Alicia Bell piece she got going on. Okay. Evening in the Park Family Cookout and Legislative Briefing is going to be this Thursday, July the 18th, 
from 5 to 7 p.m. over at Warrendale and Edward Hines Park, located at 23300 Warren Avenue, between Telegraph and Outer Drive, Area A near the Picnic Shelter. Look for Alicia Bell or give her a call at 313-224-0936. Folks, get involved. Get Have involved. some fun. You know, go listen to jazz. Do everything you can to have a good life. You want a well-rounded life. So you don't want to just come home, work, go to sleep, get back up, come home, work, go to sleep. You want to get out there and get some things done. What else you got for me real quick, ah, brother? I got one more thing. I want to plug this if you guys let me. These are the Goodfellas Dial Charity Luncheon, uh, August 3rd, 2024. Tickets are $15 at the historical King Solomon Baptist Church. All right. Charles These William. are the Eastern Stars doing this, the mm. Phoenix Stars. They do the little dress-up of the little black dolls, and they're real pretty. Mm. They're dolls dressed up like little girls, and they're beautiful. And it shows a little lady how to dress mm -hmm. and everything. And they doing this, and they want to do this. And I told them I would plug it if I could. And I'm glad you did. And they are the Phoenix Stars, and they are having a luncheon. Do they August have a number 3rd. where they can be reached? Uh, the number here, uh, I tell you what, there's no number. <laughs> no number. There's no number. Now are those tickets there? These are actual tickets. I go now and How I, much are they? They're only $15. $15. Okay. And it's a luncheon. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you want to call my number, 313-505-5765, you want one of these tickets, I'll bring one to you. All right. And you can come to the luncheon. There you go. Get you some, you know. And get you a luncheon. And, hey, and then you can dress up a little dial, and maybe your dial will be chosen. All right. And then there is a prize. All right, folks. Let's get, give me that number one more time. Oh, get my number. Get a little number, closer to the mic, he said. My number is... Wayne Bernard, my number is for the luncheon, Goodfellows Luncheon, Charity Dial Luncheon. It's 313-505-5765. All right, all right. Well, folks, we didn't came down. We got two minutes to go. As Ms. Broden said, you do better if you know better. And um, you know what to do. You know where to find her research, feedback, all that good stuff. Saturday call, get on it. It's Saturday from 3 to 6. 978-990-5000. You're going to be prompted. Then you're going to go ahead on put in the access code 338729. Get on the call this Saturday. Get involved with what's going on. Check us out on Facebook. We on Twitter. You know your email and all that good stuff. Just go to the site. Got all that information. You'll figure it out. Brother Wayne Bernard, we want to thank you again for coming on out, sharing with the listeners and viewers. Good information, folks. This is one you're going to want to check out when it comes to YouTube. Henry Tyler posted up on the WHPR TV 33. Henry Tyler, all right. Yes, indeed. Up there on that YouTube page. and Go to the page. All of the great shows that broadcast down there are over there. And pick whatever you like. Put it on your Facebook page and share it with your peoples. Just want to once again thank Brother R.J. Watkins for this station. Right. We need stuff RJ. like this. It's important. It's a great station. Brother Timmy Tim Live. This brother is the best engineer in the business. He makes sure we look this good all the time every Monday. <laughs> Just want to say, Miss Theo Broden, enjoy Yo. yourself. We had a good time today. A lot of love. Peace. Just remember, hands off your pension. That's right. Hands off my pension, hands off your pension. That's right. You need that pension. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. Feedback.